Justice me. Money in the way for what they got to say. I throw it up, it's falling down, it's definitely in the way. Welcome back, guys. Another episode of Chart Talk with Shake and myself. <laughs> We're going over the market outlook, member ideas, good trade, bad trade, as well as top idea of the week. Shake, you want to uh, get it started with the market outlook? Start it up. All right. So today is what I like to call a day to take notice in the market. We saw massive divergences. We've seen these software names that were uh, previous market leaders about four months ago. They're they're in a full fledged bear market. We have these names like the Team. MDB, Vive, you type up all these names, they're down between 25 and 50% from highs. So you, since they're market leaders and they are so destroyed, you would anticipate the market's horrible, right? But alas, we've seen massive sector rotation. We have names like RPM and PPG, industrial names, so strong, absolutely raging, did not, did not flinch in the market weakness today. We have JP Morgan and Bank of America, 52 week highs and just pumping, like not even giving anyone a chance to get in. So we saw weakness at highs that signals we'll see some sort of pullback. I definitely think we're going to see some sort of pullback, but I don't think it's going to get disastrous just based on the rotation into the value names we're seeing. Just because the names, not the, the, the risk on names aren't acting as well as we'd like them to, doesn't mean the market's going to sell off because we're seeing such strength in, in sectors like industrials and financials until we see those sectors kind of wean off, we can't think this market's gonna really sell off. So I think we're due for maybe a little pullback the rest of the week, uh, but we have a ton of earnings names coming out and we haven't heard a ton of news on the China front and all that stuff. So, you know, no news is good news in that space where we can just kind of trade and, you know, not see the massive uh, intraday moves. But other than that, I'd say we have to keep an eye on how things like the industrials and financials trade. And if we see these software names turn around at all, but, but with the continued weakness we saw today, I think we're definitely due for you know a little bit downside action throughout the rest of the week, but I'm uh, I'm not sure how much of a pullback I'm really anticipating because of the strength in, in fight like the banks. Look at J.P. Morgan and Bank of America; their charts are insane to think we're going to sell off with those names like that. So you know, it's definitely something that that's the main thing I'm going to be looking at is if those names can maintain their strength, and if those software names um, that I highlighted uh, continue to be weak. So that's the thing I'm looking at. And we have about 400 you know, companies reporting earnings the rest of the week. So that'll, that'll be a huge you know, dictator of the market uh, direction. So you know, we have just so much news the rest of the week that uh, we'll see. You know? It's a, a lot of different things to look at right now. So many divergences. I'm with you. I think even like what you mentioned with the spy, like, it's so tough where like – I think it's more the new guys where it's like when we get like near SPY 300, it's like – everyone wants to be gung ho where it's like, and no one wants to buy like on those like tougher days, but it's like, we've been in this like 20 point range and it's like, you know, we're in this range where it's right. we're running the sport running. It's very, sport. It's it's very clear range, you know, and we're showing weakness at the top of the range was at right at that resistance. So it's like, you know, we've seen us sell off from here all year. So I, I guess that's, you know, it's time to clean up the, the amount of risk a bit, but at the same time, we're seeing such crazy strength that uh, the things that uh, a four mentioned that it's just tough to think that, the market's really going to get destroyed. Yeah. With that, we have a, a couple of pretty decent ideas for, uh, from members. So if you want, we'll jump into those. Jump in. We got uh, Brian Trung with UAL through this 91, 92 area. Wow. That's a, that's a nice little range there. Um, what, do you have trading view up? Do they, have, do they have earnings coming up? They had earnings on the 15th. They had earnings already. Yeah. So then if this flags out, I like this through 92 in time. Um, but it's got to flag out a little bit more for us on the daily. But the weekly chart is definitely there. So I don't mind that idea at all. Nice. And let's uh, next up, we got Gome. He's looking at his O'Reilly. 410. Yeah, I think they have earnings. They have earnings this week, don't they? Yeah, uh, tomorrow. Nice. Tomorrow morning or after the close? Oh, you can't tell from trading. Uh, I'm not sure. Um, this is a name. I'm hoping they have great earnings and they give us a chance to buy this 410 on earnings. Um, we love those earnings trades breaking huge macro levels. So this one's heavily on my radar uh, once they report those earnings. Yeah, this is one of my favorite names for the week. Yeah. Well, instead of for who knows how long. 
Uh, next up, we got Nicholas American Express through 120. Uh, I'm on. I'm on e signal, and it doesn't tell me I'm uh if they had earnings yet. Can you do me a favor and say like whether it? Is? I'll, I'll keep that all. Uh, we got October 18th. So they report. Yeah, they reported already. Oh, they reported through what 120? Mm -hmm. Uh, that's just okay to me. I mean, I don't see a huge macro pattern there. Uh, mm -hmm. I think if it flagged out for two weeks under that 120, then definitely, absolutely. But until then, um, it's just kind of wide and loose. Right mm -hmm. now, we want to, you know, only keep it to the best of the best, the O'Reillys of the world. Uh, we got next Tom uh, Bay Meter, who did his homework that you made him yeah. do. Um, LAD 136. Oh, lad, huh? Yeah, that's a really nice level. Um, yeah, it sold off today, so it looks like it needs a little bit of time, but when it's ready, through that area, I like that one a lot. That one looks really nice, actually. For you guys who aren't in the alpha chat, what happened with uh, Tom this week? For the last few weeks, we've talked about this ALGN, murder this trade. We bought the 190, trailed it perfectly. And it was like he was talking to us about this trade for weeks in advance. He was like, this is my setup, huge base, huge support. Like He had been staring at this chart for weeks before he even put on the trade. Mm -hmm. And then that's, that's the important part. And then yeah. all right, you can continue. And then the <laughs> disaster was this uh this boeing gets absolutely destroyed uh, completely nothing that we ever looked for we're never buying on the way down and we're buying in that smoke 30 40 points in a day and he tries to cutely buy like 350 some you know random little pivot prior and it gets you know it gets pushed right out and the next day gap is down so he he lost a couple points in it but it was one of those like he was just throwing in the trade because he was you know maybe a little cocky he, he, he had a name bias he's like this Boeing is a good company. Well, when it's going down like that, it's not a good company. If you're trading for the next five years, sure, it's a good company. But for us, when it's this week or you know these next couple of days, you can't really worry much about good company, bad company, as much as the current price action you're seeing. Mm -hmm. And I think that was his main mistake in the trade. He's like, oh, Boeing's a good company. I'm going to try it. And he even said when he was putting out the trade, he's like, uh, I know that this trade is all based on hope. Like he just had every telltale sign of like a bad trade to be put on. So I just thought it was a great opportunity to highlight it for him because he had that great ALGN trade. It's like do more of that and less of BA. So if you're going to do BA, highlight the shit out of it so you know that it's a mistake when it's happening. So I mean, he knows, but um, great. I think it was a great lesson for everybody where it was like he stared at this name for weeks on end and then he finally puts on that trade, kills that trade, and then gets smoked in a trade he looks at for five minutes and off this pivot and blah, 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 and like just quick bullshit trading, you know? And then going off that, so he had to lose money to learn that lesson. And right. I think he's trying to avoid these losses by just not doing them. Right. So yesterday we had Jeff was looking at his Mondelez, which is the name that I'm in, and it's getting a little beat up. And it was the same thing. It was like pulling into 52 or 53, and he's like, I can buy off support. We're like, no. Like, listen to Tom's BA thing. Like, don't do the same shit that he did. And at least he was able to avoid this loss, which he would have just walked right into, where Tom unfortunately had to lose that money because – those, you know, sometimes you have to lose money on these lessons. So at least we were able to see Jeff picked up on it and didn't lose money as a result from following that same thing, which is when names are falling and you can buy the exact price you want to buy, it's usually the worst possible side. Yeah. It's, don't buy that shit. <laughs> so, say you want to buy 50 on the way down, you get 50, you're going to lose money. Like yeah. you just don't want to get that price. So some little lessons up. And, and a little lesson. If, so at, at pretty much the same exact thing you were saying. You, you need these things to prove they're going to hold up as support first. You don't want to buy that first test into that major support level. You want to let it show that there's some buying there first. It's like mm -hmm. uh, just pretty much exactly what you said. Yeah. So do we just murder it out a little bit? No, I mean it's good lessons. <laughs> We're all learning. We're learning. And he did the great homework and Tom's, Tom's a man. Yeah. Uh, let's see what we got next up. We got David Taylor. Again, he mentioned this mod leaves. We won't go into it in detail because, again, he wants to buy 55. I'll buy 55 with him. It's just going to definitely need some time. And we'll probably get to buy up off of, you know, eventually when this thing settles out, we'll, we'll find a way to buy up. We'll have to buy 55, but that yeah. needs definitely some time. Sure, sure would hate to bring up that footage of the chart talk where I said, wow, that 54 looks like a nice short if this case fails. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. I actually remember that. Uh, so with that being said, we covered the member ideas. We can jump into good trade, bad trade. I know you had a pretty crazy week. So if you want, I'll just do my two. And then, and I, yeah, yeah, for but, sure. Um, so one of the good trades this week, I know Khan has been in with me. It's just BBY. This is almost similar to this this Amex chart wise. It just kind of been like a base. So this is you know we bought through seventy. 
you know, just still break even stop. This is a name that like will look, you know, I'm trying to sell this in like 76, 78, but for now, just trailing it if we're wrong, break even. Um, one of the bad trades last week was this PFPT that we talked about in exhaustion for the past few months. Um, again, we were buying this 130, 132. We just didn't, you know, we didn't get that breaker that we wanted. Um, I sold most for break even at 130, and then I had some with Luke. Luke P was texting me today about his name, so we had some below 127. So I lost like three points in the remaining shares that I had, which in the moment I was kind of pissed about. But then looking at how much it got destroyed, I was like, ah, that was kind of an okay trade. So um, my PL, you would have been fucking yeah. happy. <laughs> But I know, I know you had a, a ton of this one as well. Right. So it's no, no, no. So let me get into this. Let me get into this. And it's, and it's, it's, so we always talk about how you know we can always teach these guys patterns, and we do that stuff very quickly. And the thing that makes you a trader is going through all the bullshit, get, trading your emotions over the years and years. So this PFPT for me, it, it was like it was an A plus setup going into the day. I hadn't tried it before. You know, it seemed like everyone was getting chopped up in it pretty bad. It was going and then faking out moves and all that. So then we had this day, the tight inside day. On um, October 15th, I had such a great entry. I bought off that um, 130, I had a couple dollars stop, $130 name, two dollars stop, very cheap. So I absolutely loaded the boat on this one. This is a trade I was waiting for. It finally set up perfectly and everything was looking good. And it, Bennett, this one turned into pretty fucking embarrassing. I was at the bar later that night. I, I, I tipped the chick 130 bucks. I said, buy a share of proof point. I'll come back, I'll come back in a week. I expect 145 back. <laughs> Yankees are getting smoked. It was a bad night all around. So as so as that happens, Morgan Stanley Morgan Stanley comes out with a note, cautious on all the software names. And like I knew five minutes, like right off the open, this thing, it gapped up a bit and then just fucking slammed down. And within like 10 minutes, I lost the whole trade. I, I went from plus 6K to minus 12K like quickly. So then, and that fucking hurt. That shit, that shit was embarrassing. I, did, I haven't showed my face at the bar yet. Um, so then the next day, we have this, uh, this PPG that we're waiting for. We've been waiting forever, this 120 level, right, on earnings. Mm -hmm. I was fucking hurting. I did not want to come and sit in the chair. I did not want to trade. I didn't want to set up. I didn't want to give advice. I was fucking hurting. I, I, you know, those, they take a lot out of you, those trades, when you really think you're going to be right. You load the boat, all that. But my years of doing this and just coming and having to sit in the chair the next day, you remember back, back in the day, you get locked out in the first 10 minutes, you got to sit there the entire day? Yeah. They did that to, to build up that inner strength, to build up that bullshit. So I came in the next day and put the exact same risk on in PPG because it was a better setup. It was, an eight, it was a five-year level triggering on earnings where that PFPD didn't even fully trigger yet. I was, I was weak, like trying to work my way into it. And then this one, I made a quick 18K in and like, if I don't have the resilience of that of coming and sitting in the chair the next day, I'm I'm gonna miss out on that trade, and then I'm gonna be so mad, and then it's just like a whole domino effect of anger, right? Yeah. So, the the PFPT ended up being a horrible trade. I put myself in a good position to make money. That it was an A plus setup. If that Morgan Stanley note doesn't come out, you know, maybe uh, things are a lot different. Who knows? That's all speculation. But. You know, it, because I had the resilience, I could put this PPG G trade out, trade on and make, you know, much more than I lost in that PFPT. So um, that was my good trade, bad trade for the week. It like, it retaught myself that resilience lesson because I was like bumming coming into the next day. Like, God, I got to get people fucking set up. So I'm bum right now. <laughs> but, you know, then I caught this one and everything, everything, we're back to square up one. So, I mean, that's just trading. And, you know, everyone's like, oh, it must be nice. You have these easy hours as a trader. You're never going to go through mental jumping jacks, mental gymnastics like you do in trading. So mm -hmm. it's like you have to build that that resiliency up over time, uh, and that's and that's the lesson I got retaught this week. I feel like even with those two trades, it was like even back on the desk, it was like anyone who had like their best day, it was like their following day was always their worst day. And oh yeah. Next day, it was like you if you really worked your ass off, your next day was your best day. And this was again six K is not your worst day, eighteen K is not your best day, but you turn that loss into you know made that back three X. By just like I said, getting back in the seat and not, you know, yeah, fish and like, you know, what others might do. Yeah, good Trading's shit. hard. Trading's hard. <laughs> just this just in. Trading is hard. <laughs> <laughs> really, I didn't. I wasn't aware of that. Oh my god. Uh, so let's see. Uh, we covered good trade, bad trade. Do you want to get into the top ideas for the week? Yeah, and um, we have so many earnings coming out that this is going to change. This is just right now because, I, like I said, we have like four hundred companies coming out earnings. Um, a lot of the big dogs that we've been watching for a while. But for now, 
Um, shouts out to heaven. We're going to have a pizza party in this DPZ 260. Uh, when it comes through that, uh, that 200 day simple moving average, I like that one a lot. That one's just been setting up perfectly. When you see that kind of big earnings day, like that, that buying doesn't go anywhere. That buying's there to stay. So I would expect that one to come back. And then our boy, uh, RCII, um, that 27, 27, 10 area looks like it's finally ready, getting closer and closer. Um, so I'll be watching that one tomorrow. Uh, a couple shorts, but eh, I'll, I'll save them. Save them for the boys in the chat, not the freebies on YouTube. <laughs> I think the only other one that we haven't mentioned that I've been keeping on is this EXPD 76, 78. It's been just, you know, flagging since oh, mid 2019. And it's just that been. Is, that's, that's gorgeous. A, yeah. That's a <laughs> that's box. That is a well, big, yeah, that's a big ass box. And if you look at the daily chart, one, two, three, four, five, the last like seven days where it like came up off support too hard. All it's done is gone sideways. So now that daily is matching up with the weekly and the monthly. You know, the side, that, that, I mean, the hourly looks amazing right there through, through what, what, 75, 50, 76? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, wow, shouts out to you. That's a beautiful looking chart. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Hi, All right, guys. Oh, we got book of the week. Fuck. Okay, yeah. Uh, let's see. Want me to go first? Yeah. So, again, another one of your recommendations. This uh, can't hurt me. By David you can't, you can't you can't recommend books I've already recommended. <laughs> oh all right, well, actually, I got a different one. That you like. All right, there you go. No. So I'm reading uh, Trading Bases, and it's a guy. He was a, a trader for Lehman for a decade. He got fired by the financial crisis when they went you know belly up, and then turned his like trading skills into betting on baseball. Again, I never gambled. I don't know shit about any of the gambling, whatever. You know, I'm the worst at it. But the one thing he talks about was difference between people who tend to bet on say football or basketball where this is the point spread like it's a you know the whatever three point spread or whatever in baseball it's like a money line it's a different the odds are different in baseball yeah, i know trust me yankees i don't know cover. i'm reading the book and i'm like I don't, <laughs> I don't read i don't watch baseball i don't know like i'm like learning all these terms but he's saying how like from like a statistical advantage like baseball has the best odds because yeah. you have like that that's that spread or whatever and he's just going into all these like crazy numbers like uh how close you can you can factor the team the team's like uh record for the year and all you do is you take the amount of runs they've scored versus the amount of runs they've they've given up yeah. and divide it by a certain percentage and it and it's within like five percent of what their record would be wow. so like within like three games being plus or minus he can tell you like the yankees will be 90 and 60 or whatever how many games play? I don't know idea. but it was like all the math behind it again i don't gamble in sports so it's useless to me but it was it's very interesting so far so i know for you maybe your buddy dylan i'll probably <laughs> give that one a read um what are you what about you what do you read about? Yeah, funny story speaking of gambling on baseball when i was when i was 13 years old i tried to be a bookie <laughs> i had to fucking give it up because i didn't understand the differences in the money lines and the yankees got me so killed i was out of business in a month and a half um <laughs> But um, I just finished that uh, Larry Hype book, The Rule, uh, incredible book. Um, so this is, this is an oldie. It's uh, The Monk Who Sold His Ferrari. This, is, um, this isn't a, a trading book in the slightest. This is just like a mindset book, you know, inspirational book. Get your mindset ready. This is one of my favorite books I've ever read, honestly. This is like a book everyone should, all, should read. It, it just kind of puts everything into really nice perspective and gives you really nice tools and stuff like that to – not get too jumbled in the brain and stuff like that. I haven't read it in a while. I got to get back to it. Um, but I, this this one just resonated with me really well. It's uh, one of my favorite books of all time. I must give that one a read. I haven't. I'm gonna check that one up. Do see it? Yeah, it's good. It's really nice. The monk who sold this Ferrari. So maybe it's not for you. <laughs> Definitely not selling it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. I think we wrapped it up. If you are still with us, drop us a thumbs up. Again, this is not what we're good at. Shout out to River Edge. Well, well, AP in there. Why not? Yeah. All right, guys. See you. <laughs> See you next week. Peace.